free page, yeah, yeah. So don't play us. Tryna get to the bag from a day. I find one. it funny how yeah. some people rock. Yeah, welcome aboard, everybody. My name is Dubious. This is Fly in Formation. Uh, today, I'm talking to Ray the Nihilist. We tried to line up one for last year, but I think he was like out on tour and, and stuff. And maybe it was my fault. I can't remember what exactly happened. But one way or the other, we've had to reschedule. And I'm happy to have Ray here joining me uh, on the second season of Fly in Formation. Um, I'm just trying to, you know, talk to different artists and learn as much as I can about the scenes uh, that all y'all are from. And, you know, of course, about new projects and stuff like that, too. Uh, I try to stay tapped in and, and play as much, you know, new new hip hop from across the country as I can every week on After the Smoke is Clear. So um, talking to artists just kind of opens the door to each of those scenes and uh, really helps me kind of tap in and, you know, figure out who's doing what out there. But, um, yeah, man, how you doing? good bro yeah no it's definitely been a a minute for sure i think i'm not too sure what it was if it was like tour or shit comes um, up art gets pushed in yeah. the back burner when shit comes up yeah no exactly man but it's definitely been a minute you've always been a good good dude and uh on the radar to talk with and all that good stuff so it's good to finally sit with you and chat for sure hell yeah man thanks for uh coming by so um like last summer you did the uh lions eat goats tour with stitch and junk right that that was the tour you wrote on yeah i did the uh in april there dope man um so since i didn't get to talk to you you know closer to that do you mind um just kind of like how did that go dude how many cities did you guys hit on that um i did i think it was an 11 date tour it was just something like super quick for them to to do right around the period where like COVID was, uh, the restrictions were being lifted and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but I did nine of those. So I did the Alberta, Saskatchewan dates. Um, and the whole thing was like really, really great. I think I've talked to a few people about it, but, um, just, I think the, I don't know what you would call it, like the achievement or whatever, the milestone, it was kind of something that was, you know, a long time coming, something that I was working towards for a while, kind of almost unspokenly. Um, and it went, you know, just further than was expected as well. Being brought on the household after that, kind of um, working with Junk now a little more closely, um, being on the same team, things like that. So Yeah, man, I wanted was... to ask about that. So that came after the tour? Like you weren't household affiliated prior to tour? No, it was actually, well, it was during the tour. So, mo yeah, like uh, a lot of the openers there on the tour um, got picked up for household during the tour. Dope. Um, so it was in the cities that we were from. Um, so mine was just that they happened to just be at the end of the tour. Nice, man. Um, so what did it look like to get onto that tour, dude? Like, how do you, cause that's a pretty big, you know, junk and, and young stitch are, uh, very prominent names across the, the hip hop scene in the country. So like, you know, uh, was it, was it tough to, to land that or how, how'd you go about that? Uh, I don't know how it really happened. I think I came up in like a conversation um between like the booking agents and everyone else and junk and stitch and stuff like that um i'm not too sure right the so they kind of reached out to you as far as like hey you're who's popping in this city we yeah, yeah. need some tours yeah and like i said too i think it was like a long time coming thing like i had done tr uh two tracks with stitch and two tracks with junk at the time so um you know and i've been talking to those two for a couple of years at least before that so um just something that i think was a long time time coming and yeah, dope. Have you produced for for either of those guys before? I know you make beats too. Um, not for their not for their cuts, but on the cuts that I do with them, I did most of it, except for the one with Junk. There, Mason Rex did that. Nice. Okay. Uh, so what's the past year been like, man? How's uh how's the artistry going over over the the meanwhile? It's good, man. Yeah. No, I uh we did after after the Lions Eat Goats. There, I just kind of um went off on my own for a little bit to go do some stuff with the crew that i was working with at the time and then i got picked up for the wake me up when it's over tour um which unfortunately at the time i just like moved to bc so the, the like finances and stuff weren't in line to be able to complete like all of it but right. i did a few dates there with the guys um you know just we've been working on a few different projects like kind of low-key in the background um i did the i've been doing good projects at the end of the year after the wake me up when it's over tour yeah i think um, i played one or two off of that uh, on at sick for sure yeah and that was just demos too like that was that was originally just like throwaway stuff and like just making things here and there and then i was like maybe it's better than i thought um so then after that i did the 
the uh which one is it geez i don't even know i did the i've been doing good tour sorry yeah i did the i've been doing good tour which was my first um headlining tour so, just self-headlining um just western canada dates um, so did you end up hitting some of the same dates that you'd and like that you'd been to opening for the the previous two tours kind of yeah actually the, the, the exact same dates except for victoria vancouver which was good which is kind of how i was lining it up right it's like trying to re-hit those demographics yeah, myself. Sense. Yeah. 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 Now that they kind of know, know your name and face and music a little bit. Uh, yeah. Now you can go back and be your own right? like the in- uh, Yeah. The introductions there. Right. So try and try and just keep, keep going and keep moving and developing in those cities and keep yeah. building. Stay, stay constant with the, the output and engagement or whatever, for sure, man. Um, so like how, how long ago were you out on tour for that then? That was, uh, just over this summer, right? Yeah, yeah, that was over this summer. That was in July. Okay, um, so man, uh, so you're based out in BC now, right? Like at first, when I was kind of tapping in and listening to your music, you were, I think, in Saskatchewan, someplace, like out in Saskatoon, yeah. maybe. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, Saskatoon. So, so whereabouts have you landed now? Uh, Cranbrook, Cranbrook, BC. So it's just like I'm not too sure if you've heard of it. It's just over the border of uh, right. You're in Lethbridge, so you'd know, like right now around uh, the Sparwood Fernie area. Yeah, it's a little okay. bit past there. Okay. Yeah, but yeah, not really like a hip hop hotspot out there for sure. <laughs> no, and that's imagine. both. Yeah, man, and that's both like a blessing and a curse. Like it's tough in the way of like trying to get booked out here. Like I've had a few gigs out here that just like none of them have really panned out to anything. And the one that I actually got kicked out of, I didn't even get kicked out of it. I just didn't play. Um, we can talk about that later. But <laughs> you know, it's it's been weird. Like you know, and there's like six MCs out here, and and we're not like nobody's fighting for a spot really right because everyone's self-aware of the fact of where we're at here like there's you know it's not the most bubble in hip-hop for sure everyone's into bluegrass and country and yeah um, little things but you know it's like i said like it's both a blessing and a curse in that way like i think it helps me stand out in that way with with um you know kind of moving past that little obstacle and like still heading out on these tours and still finding ways dude i think it's like a classic dilemma in hip-hop of whether it's better to be you know, the big fish in the small pond or the small fish in the big pond, you know, like a lot of people move to like Atlanta or whatever and think that that's how they're going to make it. And it's like, that's where every other rapper in the world is trying to make it, you know, so there's there's so much competition in a market like that. Uh, And then on the other end of the spectrum, you get something like Cranbrook where like, if there's a few rappers there, probably the city knows you, you know, like, uh, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and likely supports you or whatever. Right. Like uh, those are kind of people that can get the push from their, their s- small population, you know, if they do manage to hit that n- niche or whatever, but yeah, man. Um, would you say it's like, do you like it more than being in Saskatoon, uh, for as far as the hip hop scene goes? I was going to say, like, I, I enjoy the factor of um, being, like, smaller. You know what I mean? Like, even Saskatoon, it's like everybody out there wants to rap. And everyone's great, too. So, you know, everyone's kind of, like, competing for everything. And it gets tough, right? So I enjoy kind of, like, having that aspect of being able to, like, kind of chill out and, and, and cut back a little bit and just, like, make my music and take that pressure off of, like, having the external focus on, like, elsewhere and who's doing what and like trying to keep up with everyone i think it's been good for me so i enjoy it and i i i don't know if i'd say i enjoy cranbrook scene like i've only met a few people i don't even know if like cranbrook necessarily has, has a, scene, a scene right yeah. like i was yeah, gonna say like, like is something... there a hip-hop night ever or anything like nah dude like yeah. there's a there you know we did i when junk came through i did the few shows with him um and those were really good like you know he's originally from the east kootenays so like he, he you know he's old friends and etc hometown and, favorite yeah exactly right so he's gonna you know crush and i think we almost sold out cranbrook was really good um but then you know like stuff i've done here is very slim like uh you know when i played in crest in it's very slim it's tough too and that's also like touring canada in itself right is like you it's so big and like so like stretched out and spanned out and stuff and you have to hit these like small places like this definitely so. yeah and uh, a lot of the time the the community to me at least seems like it's kind of segmented you know where people from each individual city might not know the artists from those cities uh or from outside of the city as well or whatever yeah. so yeah it makes touring across the country tough as well as like travel costs are are very real if you've lived in you know on the 
east coast of america you can hit how many different spots within two hours drive or whatever that you could play a show compared to up here you got to drive six hours between some gigs just to to get to the next uh venue or whatever um but yeah man it, it definitely presents a lot of challenges that uh you know only come with kind of a smaller market like we have here in canada yeah for sure and it's weird but that's the good thing too like you know back to like i mean we you know, tour and stuff, et cetera. But back to even like Cranbrook, like that's where it's been good in a way is to like not just develop uh, relationships with like, you know, rappers, producers, people who are almost like doing the same things as you is it's almost like I've had to work with, you know, like people who do, you know, make clothes or like do this stuff and like kind of like branch out into art scenes in a different way because that's what I have, you know, to my exposure and stuff like that. So it's been good in that way and it's kind of like almost an inspiration for other things too, right? So it's nice. Yeah, definitely, man. Um, so like, are you drawing inspiration then from some of the other genres of music that you're hearing being performed out there or like musical inspiration or? Um... Um, I think kind of, I think in a way, like having the lack of, I wouldn't say like it's the local scene, like I'm super tapped into like anybody because sure. I, I still don't get out as much as I should. Um, but I definitely think like not, like I said, like not having that external focus of like who's doing what and who just dropped this, like who's doing that and trying to keep up with everyone's projects, et cetera. Like yeah. I definitely, I definitely find myself making like other stuff or like, you know, just sitting down to like just play the guitar, you know, just to just play or like, you know, things like that. Like, I, I don't know if it's influence or inspiration from, from, you know, being here for sure, but it definitely like, I think plays a part. Yeah, yeah, your environment's going to seep into the art one way or the other. I mean, with most yeah. people anyways, yeah. Um, so you've been producing a lot lately or uh you more leaning into writing bars or you said you've been working on new projects. Are you doing both of those things for them or how, yeah, how's I've been it coming doing together? Both. Nice, man. I I've been doing both. So it's kind of like for this project, I'm really I don't know, like after especially after the touring and like everything like that, like uh, you know, even just years of like trying to get on like certain radars and like, you know, just get to a certain stature. Like I'm just at a point where I'm like, okay, I want to make like good music, but I'm just like super happy. Not that I'm not happy with the other, other stuff. Right. But like, I've even talked to a few friends and I'm like, man, like I want to make something that I feel changes like the path of, of my career, like where I'm going or like, you know, what's expected of me. So I've been kind of like, trying to make it as it comes and i just like create beats and stuff like that i want to work with a few different producers i'm lining up a few different budgets and things like that but so when you say you want to change like drop a project that changes the trajectory of what people expect of your career or whatever like we talking about going big like you want to drop something that's so well received that it's really going to push you to kind of another level is that the idea I'd say, I'd say both, right? Like I'm aiming for something a little bit bigger in the terms of like, you know, all over like the production, the sound quality, the mixing and mastering. But right. I think just also something like for me, you know, I spent a long time with like the personal side of like writing things with a message and every track needs to have like, you know, a certain like substance, which is great. Like, you know, and then after that, it was like, maybe a little bit too much of that so you know started going into like the bar heavy stuff and like the stuff like tracks like the you know that are on i've been doing good where they're like they're great but like this it's the lyrical you know 808 heavy stuff so yeah i think finding a way to at the same time like shift those and like merge the two and you know um with like the reconnection of like myself my culture like where i'm at in a personal life like i think just make something that really stands for something um for myself something that i can be proud of and like the people who know me can be proud of and also like the people who've been along for the ride so far can like look back at and like show see the the progression in and uh you know so things like that i like to ask artists like project to project you know i don't think any artist would ever tell me that they're not progressing from project to project but are you making a conscious effort to change your sound or like evolve the sound incorporate other sounds into the music or um is it more about kind of perfecting the thing you're already doing i guess if um, that makes sense no for sure i would say i think right around like covid like 2020 2021 like i made a, a really big conscious shift in like my approach to music and my quality of music and like how i want to make these these songs and like um, have my beats want us, I want them to sound and et cetera. So I think ever since then, it's been a constant evolution of like, you know, really just like honing that sound. 
Um, and even now, like you, with this next record, with it being a little bit more like personable, um, I think I'd like it to be a little bit more ambient. Um, little like I don't know if you've heard the term like wet, like you know, with all the everything else and stuff going on with the vocals and et cetera. So, yeah, something lots, that really... lots of effects on the vocals. That's that's what I think of when somebody says wet vocals. Yeah, 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 just like reverbation, you know, like really like shimmery and I don't know, I don't know how to describe it, but really ambient and and I think something that could if it was like verses and the vocals were sort of dry, like it helps give that presence and. You're, you're able to really listen to what's being said, right? Right. Um, but you want more atmospheric kind of, yeah, uh, yeah atmospheric vocals, maybe. Yeah. Atmosphere, for sure. That's the word, yeah. But no, definitely since like 2020, I think it's been a conscious effort, you know, especially around then, like I went back to, I'd say like, um, almost like my my punk roots, like my metal stuff that I used to do, added some of that in with tracks like Gran Torino and like No Ceilings, if you listen to them, there's like little bits and pieces of it sprinkled here and there. And then even like songs that go right now. But I think at the same time, like I've always been super diverse. So I've always tried to not like put myself in a box in what I create. Yeah, makes sense, man. Um, so you mentioned like that you had punk roots. I was kind of, I like to ask people how they got into making music or whatever. Uh, it's a pretty basic question, but like, do you want to take us back and, and, and explain kind of how you got into rapping from, uh, you know, from making punk music, maybe? Is that what you used to do? Yeah, dude, I used to, yeah. Uh, I don't know, like my whole life, I've been into music heavily, like super, like just music driven. And like my, also my grandfather was like a huge influence because he played guitar and like he was heavily, heavily into music as well. And like wanted to record his own stuff, et cetera. Right. So, I mean, he never like had any, any like extravagant studios or anything. So he's, he's very independent based, but you know, same thing. Like I just had a huge interest in it. So, um, you know, growing up, I think that translated into a lot of stuff and eventually like, you know, around high school age, like trying to form bands and et cetera. And then, you know, you, you trying to like, I've, I've told the story like a, a, a thousand times almost like, it's like trying to get everybody like in line with bands is like one of the most toughest things because schedules totally. and like everyone's influences, everyone's inspirations and, you know, so. Well, everybody's th egos, right? It comes down to yeah, a lot of the time people clash heads over whatever. <laughs> yeah. That too, for sure, man. You know, so it's like, it's everything. So, you know, at the time I, I was looking for something solo. So it's like, trying to do like figure out what to do if I do like folk acoustic stuff or like maybe poetry and then you know so I'm aiming some more towards like poetry and spoken word stuff which I think a lot of people do like it's funny in that way that like there's a lot of people that transition from like metal punk to like rap right around the same time I did too so yeah um, get into but, the you know, spoken word poetry, scene first yeah <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, and like spoken word was like super, I think, becoming a huge like trait in some of the hardcore bands and like certain things like that. Like they were really trying to add that in. So, well, and I, I mean, the spoken word scene uh, has a lot of crossover with like both the punk and the hip hop scenes. Um, it's like a sweet spot in the middle because it, it like ties in a bunch of the activism that you get in both of those two genres, too. A lot of the time, I, I feel like in spoken word. So, yeah, yeah, I, I feel like all three of those genres work well together and people normally get along from them or whatever right no exactly yeah and then so i think that transition just happened naturally where it's like okay i can like i can talk on like ambience in the background playing or i could talk on a beat and like you know um from there it just kind of evolved makes sense man yeah um so you mentioned your your grandpa shouts to him i've i've got a theory i've been asking people um that you answered there that i feel like it takes a couple generations to make a successful artist sometimes uh in the current environment and i you know i, I feel like a lot of the people i talk to are like yeah my my whatever uncle helped me write my first grants or like got me out playing shows or you know there's a, it seems as though a lot of people have the um the older uh, influence in their life from the family. And then that kind of draws them into music or whatever. So it shouts, shouts to your grandpa, man. <laughs> it's, it's good yeah, to man, pass no. along the traditions. Yeah. He was huge, man. He was huge in, in that way. Like even when, you know, I mean, he taught me like most of the stuff with like guitar and everything. And like, he's always buying me instruments, like things that I needed and stuff with trying to record or whatever. So, so you know, he was huge in that lane. And then, you know, even after he passed, like without when I was touring, like if I would have been, if he still would have still been here, you know, we would have been driving and everything like that. So he was a huge support, right? Right on, yeah. man. Yeah, that's that's huge. Um, so you mentioned just there that you play guitar. Like, are you classically trained in in you know music and music theory or uh, um, how many instruments taken, do you play? 
I've, well, I play a lot. Like I, I, you know, growing up, like I've been in band. So I played like the saxophone there. Um, I, I grew up playing drums. So I played drums for a long time now. Um, I, you know, bits and pieces of obviously like playing the guitar. So you pick up like pieces of the bass here and there with that. Right? Like I've had right. opportunities to play bass as well. So I'm pretty well, I'd say well-rounded. So- um, but it, like a master of all of them, I definitely say far from it. Like I, you know, I've I've never I've taken theory. Like I've done a lot of school, like in high school and stuff. Like, yeah, if you were in I, band like, and stuff, you would have learned how to read sheet music at some point. Yeah. Yeah, but it's all out the window at this point, right? Like it's you know, like totally. I, I I learn it and forget it. Like I I I take like a Kurt Cobain approach almost. It's just like if it sounds great, like let's let's you know do it. Yeah, I mean probably having all those different tools whether you know whether you're a master of any of the trades that that you practice or not i feel like you know hip-hop production is a good bridge for someone who knows a little bit of all those different things to be able to put together you know big layered productions that um take a lot of a lot of doing and that regular people who couldn't play instruments wouldn't be able to do at all or whatever so uh do you end up playing like on your beats are you playing instruments a lot of the time or like do you sample i do like keys here and there and stuff and i do stuff like that i was gonna say like i'm still like in a way building up that arsenal like um you know getting a new guitar and like you know i i I, when i started hip-hop i i sold a lot of my instruments for like different investments was like get merch or like you know just a lot of the indie stuff like that right but i used and like it's almost like a regret now because you look back and it's like, man, I had a drum kit, I had guitar. Dude, you know, I was I just gonna say, do you still have the drum kit? Because you could mic up live drums and and do. Well, and it was like electric kit too, right? Oh, so like no. the yeah. you know MIDI in and like make your own breaks. The opportunities are almost like endless there. So it's like knowing what I know now, it's like shit. Like you you kind of like messed up your approach in a way, but you know there's no reason why I can't do that. So in a way, I'm like building up that arsenal and and you know working totally. with the tools that I have. Totally, man. Uh, so. Uh, when you have been recording, what's the process look like? Like, are you, um, well, I guess it's interesting talking to a guy who makes beats and writes. Are you writing as you're making a beat? Do you write to a different beat and then make a beat behind it? Um, yeah. What, what's your songwriting process look like if you're just kind of starting from scratch on something? Yeah. Um, it's like I said earlier too, like I'm almost letting like at this point, just try to let music just come as it comes. Um, so like I create daily, like I'll, I'll, you know, if I'm not like writing every day, I'll make a beat every day or something. So whether that gets used or not is like, you know, whatever, I don't know. But um, usually if a beat's like really, really good, like for me, I really like it or something. I hear a line or something, it'll just pop up and I'll just start writing or I'll be like, man, like, you know, this is the one kind of thing. So, and it, it, I just let it all flow and I I try not to approach anything with like super conceptualized or subject matter, you know, like there, especially on this record with like trying to take a stance, like I've, I have a track about like the starlight tour. I don't know if you heard of like the Sask suit and the starlight tour and stuff like that. Driving people out the country and dropping them there. Fucking pigs. Yeah. So there, there is like a, a subject matter and like the songs do have concepts and stuff like that, but it's a lot of just like, if it comes, it comes. And like, you know, that beat in specifically, like when you say that, like, what's the process like? And I'm like, oh, it just comes. That's the one that I think of. Cause it's like, I heard the sample. I'm like, okay, like this is like, I, I hear something and then I'm going to throw drums over top and it's like, okay, this is this. And then literally you're listening. I'm like, man, this gives me like starlight tours. Like, you know, just, you know, something calling me to write about that or, you know, right. Like, so. Yeah. So do you normally like, do you have like a vault of your own beats that you're listening to to try to get that inspiration from or did you get that inspiration as you were making that beat like definitely as i was making it like yeah. i said like i just create daily until things come right yeah. like sometimes it like sometimes i'll make like three four beats a day and like i mean they're probably all like decent but to me i'm just like no like these are shit like i don't like these so you know just practice but, mode yeah yeah essentially Dope, and there's somewhere like I don't even care either. Like I just like chop up a sample or you know whatever. And if it comes, it comes. And like if not, it, you know. And then, you know, so there's still times too though where I'll almost like chase inspiration. But I I don't want to even say it like that. Like I try not to, right? You know. But there is times where like you'll hear a certain beat or like reference tracks, like you know things like that. So every now and then you'll find something. But 
again, I've I've been trying to like make something something more a little bit more genuine and stuff like that. So yeah, I'm trying to let it just come. Nice man. Um, so this is something I ask everybody: Do you get more fulfillment from being on stage performing or from being? you know, in studio and writing the songs and, you know, producing and making the song itself. Yeah, definitely on stage. Yeah, definitely on stage. I think like I enjoy, I think like the recording process and like the making songs, like at this point for me, it's like not in a bad way, but it's almost just like something that I, I have to do. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I, I'm just like, if I don't do this, I, I don't know what I'm, what else I'm going to do, like kind of thing. So I do that and I make these tracks, but you know, like being out on the road, being out on tour, that's something that I've like always dreamed of to do. Like even the small tours, like I was, like I said, like I come from punk and metal. So I knew like what the indie tour lifestyle was. And I knew what I signed up for like long before I ever even went out on any tours right. or hit the road. Right. So had you done tours something... with punk bands? The first tour I ever went on was with like two different punk bands. And then I'd jump on stage with my DJ and we'd do like a rap set. People didn't know what the hell was going on. <laughs> was, yeah. Uh, no, like even long. then, like just too young. Right. And like nobody like was in line with each other and like, you know, not able to, to get hand like, figure it out right so yeah. you know i had done my own like self-research in a way before i had you know done the stuff my first tour was with a group that i was with uh way back and even that was just kind of like a quick like weekend run like you know quick three couple dates and stuff like that trying to hit, hit the road so my first actual like tour tour was with junk on the, the lion's eat goat store dope man uh that's that's a big tour for your first tour had yeah. you done a lot of performing before that just not really like outside of your yeah. city yeah yeah, yeah, for sure. And that's like, I mean, like, you know, it's I, I think I was always like into even in the bands, like I was always like a front man. And that was always like the energy that I brought to practices and et cetera. I was always like stage ready in a way. So right. like, it, it, it's just like, I love the stage because that's where I think these songs that you take from the recording and you take it out. And it when it resonates with people, I think it's something different. And it just like adds this extra layer to everything. Dope, man. So now that you're working with House Gang, like working on new albums, what does what a relationship like that look like? Like, is do they have any creative say in it? Are you bouncing ideas off of, you know, Junk or whoever else runs uh, House Gang as far as promotion or the actual song content itself? I don't know. Uh, how does household, that go? at the moment, Household is just like, it's just a... a the way that the junk has described it is it, it's perfect. I think is it's just a like my a group of like-minded individuals, like not even just artists. Cause it's all, it's all over the map, right? Like it's producers, it's rappers and all this stuff like that. Um, and it's just a group of, of people and it, it, outside of like the art as well, like the personal aspects, I think like being friends with like, you know, Reed district, Ian, like these Devin, you know, a lot of these guys have shown me what I think, you know, and it might just be too, like I'm growing into my adolescent ages, you know, myself, like in the process, but I think what like friendship, like, you know, real, like deep rooted love for each other is, and you know, um, is that a good way to find artists to work with then like through, through your crew? Yeah. I mean, I'd, I'd say so. Like I, I've met a few different people, like, and it's also too, like, I think in a way we're kind of like, I would say we're also like, trying to do our own things too right um it, you know junk still doing his thing like it's not necessarily that like we're like we're like a big group that like rides together wu-tang clan style i think it's like there's a canopy there of, of all of us kind of thing you know yeah weird man makes sense um this one i don't ask everybody because again it's kind of a corny podcast question but like how did you yeah. choose your name uh ray the nihilist is not you know an everyday name uh so like i don't know i heard it, it it instantly made me think of the big lebowski i remember a couple years back you sent me like an album that hadn't dropped yet and i i got to debut that on at sick and i dropped a bunch of big lebowski samples across it or whatever yeah. um but like are you a nihilist like that is that your philosophy uh not anymore so it's like funny in a way like that's a question i get asked often and i never like, you know, I think too, like you said, like it's a corny podcast question, but I love answering it too. Cause so, you know, a lot of people like hear it and think like, Hey, that's what I am. And then also be like, the thing I've heard a lot is like, that's not marketable. 
You right. know what I mean? Like in today's day and age, like a nihilism, like, you know, we're here, we die. Like, you know, it's not necessarily the most positive thing to be like, if you're trying to go mainstream, et cetera. Right. So, yeah, but, but it wouldn't be the first thing promoted to the mainstream that wasn't positive. That's for sure. You know, there's, no, there's exactly. a lot of that there's sentiment in the world today right now too. Yeah. There's a lot worse out there, but it also comes like, I love being asked that cause it, it gives me an opportunity. Like, so when I first started rapping, I was like at a point in my life where I think it was, you know, a lot of personal stuff going on, I think. And you also, you know, like, I think I was about 18. So you're at that point where there's a lot of like shift and, you know, you're feeling a lot, things like that. Yeah. So that's how I was. Like, I was really like deeply rooted in like, you know, we're just here and we're like, we die. Like, you know, I think in a way I had like a long-term existential crisis too for like, really long time i mean so. adolescent years that's called teenage angst right <laughs> no exactly right time, yeah. I, i'd also experienced like a lot of you know my dad passing young and like things like that so i think that opened up with a lot of doors super young for me in that way so for real yeah like i was at the time and then i i was going through this period where i'm like looking hey when i was like rapping i'm like i need a rap name I need a cool stage name because it's the basic shit right like every every rapper needs a cool rap name yeah so i'm like but i'm also looking i, I like the three syllable ones because as you know like at the time it's like i think that was like chance the rapper tyler the creator like there wasn't much it's a good way to be found on google right like that's that's something with yeah. naming yourself as a rapper these days is people have to be conscious of like how do I name myself something that sounds kind of cool that also isn't the same thing that those 15 guys are named? Yeah, and it's unique, right? Like, it's, I'm like, I, I don't want just to be like one word or like, you know, like, you know, something else. So I, I but I also noticed at the time too, where it's like, uh, there's another poet, like Trey the Ruler. So, you know, creation, ruling, like all of this stuff is still like positive. Right. And at the time I'm like, I want to flip that and not to be negative, but, in the way like like i said like i went through like a long-term existential crisis so during that period i had to accept that like we're all gonna die you know my family like my older family they're gonna die like you know people are gonna pass away and things are gonna happen and etc so you know i i faced that in a way and let it anchor me so it was the same thing it's gonna be like i'm gonna be i'm gonna call myself this so that i can shift out of that perception become something that's not that and then be able to like you know years later like situations like now be able to tell that story and be like, you know, this is who I was. This isn't who I am anymore. And I was able to, to make it out of that. So that's why I've, I've still, even through like being told it's not marketable, I've kept that name. Yeah, I like it, man. And I wouldn't say it's not marketable. I, I've heard a lot less marketable names than that as I'm doing after I don't think, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't think it was negative. Like, I, I, but I, I hear what they're saying. Like, in a world of like the radio era and like things like that, like, it's definitely not the most positive outlook on life. No, but totally. you know, you also but have like rappers. It's easy like to remember. It's something. That... Yeah, right there. You yeah, go. And, and Ray the Nihilist is something that's easy to remember. It's going to stick in people's heads as something memorable. Um, and you know, you're you're lucky you got a nice short name, Ray, that is is like easy for people to actually walk up and and call you that or whatever too. So yeah, yeah man, uh, I, I like the name, but um, that's just my opinion. Uh, yeah, can I ask you what you've been listening to lately, man? Shit. Off the top of my head, I don't know. Let me I'll double check. I'll see. Um <laughs> what? I think the usual. I think I've like I listen to a lot of indigenous hip hop, so I've been listening to like a lot of Travis Thompson, Snotty Nose, things like that. Yeah. Um, Snotty Nose is dope. New Dreams yeah, just, I didn't just to dropped two much. dope tracks last week too. Jesus and Dakota Bear, hey? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I used to work with Dakota a long time ago. So it's like funny. Yeah, like the, the indigenous scene is just like bubbling and it's amazing to see. It's Definitely. just like a pot at this point that's just like bubbling up. So it's great. But there's a lot of that stuff. And then at the same time, like I try and like I said, I, I'm all over the place. Like I I can't even think of anything off the top of my head at this point. I try and like I listen to it. I'll throw stuff on, but I try and stay away from Spotify at the same time. I have this like weird thing where i need music all the time yeah. so i'm trying to like be a little bit okay with being present in you know the moment yeah i mean spotify is like i think it's love hate you know it's it's a weird duality there like it helps me do what i do and stay up to date with week to week releases or whatever but uh, what they're doing to artists is not right you know and especially now they've made that change to make it so that people who don't reach some criteria aren't even going to be paid at all, which like, I don't know. I, I was on social media today being like, was anybody, is anybody going to miss the 23 cents that we were making off Spotify or like, 
does it even matter to me like spotify is a platform where you can at least like point people to your work and it's easy for them to to find it and access it or whatever but yeah you got to get them engaging beyond spotify to have any uh any type yeah. of traction right yeah. no exactly right it's like this I, I i've heard of that a little bit like that thing with spotify and what they're doing but i haven't heard like the full what's yes. even happening so just been like over the past week they've said that uh I think they made an announcement that like, unless, unless an artist reaches some criteria, like, I don't, I don't know what number it is, but X number yeah. of plays, they're not going to get paid at all. Whereas it used to be like, they would get a few pennies or whatever and still be paid. Yeah. Out. Yeah. No. Yeah. And that's funny too. Like, I don't even know if I qualify for that or like where I'm at with that kind of thing. And it's just like, at this point too, I don't, I almost don't like care in a way I've like separated myself from that. Like I know for a fact, it's like you said, like I actually checked my distro kid bank. Cause I've been saving it up too. Like, I'm just like, Oh, like I'm going to just wait. Like, you know what I mean? And, uh, I, I checked it the other day after like two years or three years or something. And there's like $150 in there. So it's like, you know, I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Like I made, uh, you know, I can say I made a hundred bucks off the streams and whatever, but yeah, I've I bought also these figured shoes it out, from like, stream money. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. yay. But at the same time, it's like, I fi- I figured out that, that like, if you haven't figured out that in today's day and age, the money's in elsewhere, right? Like it's in touring, it's in endorsements, it's in, yeah. you know, like merchandise, et cetera. Like, you know, I don't know what you're doing. Cause that's, you know, Definitely yeah. not. It's, it's unfortunate though. You know, like we should be able to make music or money off the actual content and music that we're making other than having to go external with it. Right. But I think that's also at the same time. That's how it's always been. Right. Definitely dude. Um, can I ask you, you've been around some successful artists. Um, is there any trait that comes to mind when I ask what's a quality that most successful artists who you know share? Um, I don't know if there's a specific trait, but something that I've seen a lot of and heard a lot of being around certain people. Um, I'm not too sure how the actual old quote goes, but it's like, you know, you know, the show me your circle quote, that kind of thing. Like, um, almost being around people who are like, even with like, if you look, if you look at household, like I look at, we all look at each other and we're like, man, like you inspired me. Like you're great. You're great. You're great. You're great. And it just adds something to us. So I think just, I think I, I see a lot of these people surrounding themselves around people they think may be better than them or have n- like further knowledge or, you know, uh, you know, just the show me your circle quote, like that kind of thing. Yeah. So that, the, a, that you are the people you're around kind of thing. That yeah, yeah, of thinking. yeah. 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 I gotcha. Um, yeah, man, to expand on that, I'd say like, I've heard, you know, that, that an artist or anybody, but artists particularly should have somebody around them that they look up to and then somebody around them who they're passing knowledge down to, as well as peers who are at their level. And, uh, yeah, yeah I think, I think that that goes kind of hand in hand with like, you are the people you're around or whatever. Cause, uh, you know, if, if you're talking to older people and younger people, you'll, you'll pick up some gems from, from both, uh, you know, the past and the present or whatever. Um, yeah this is one that I ask everybody is social media a pain in the ass or is it a blessing? Um, I think it's both. I think like we're living in a a day and age that's like, you know, we have it at the like palm of our fingers, but to what extent at the same time, right. When you have millions of other people trying to get the same thing that you're trying to get, but that's not the, you know, like you have more chances winning the lottery than being here. We're here. Right. So like, that's not to say you couldn't, um but for me personally i'd say it's definitely a pain in the ass and not even in the way that it's just like i think like the fact that it's become such a crucial part of like growth in your career is kind of shitty um and it it just in the way that it like it, it revolves around trends and then trying to stay organic in those trends is a tough thing for me um and, you know, to be honest, like, I just never figured out what made, so like, these, like, even for, like, the organic rappers and stuff, and art, like, just, like, not even rap, but, like, artists, like, what makes them bubble on social media, right? So, I'm figuring it out here and there, but it's, like, it's definitely a pain in the ass, but it's, it's again, it's the same way, it's blessing and a curse. Yeah, hell yeah. Um, is hip-hop a young man's game? They always used to say that, but people have been telling me that uh, ageism is dead in hip-hop. What do you think? I'd say so. You know, you have dudes like, you know, like 
man, it's it's hip hop. I mean, it's not an old genre. Like it just turned fifty, so you know, like. But at the same time, like it's been around enough, and I think laid enough of a blueprint for things that you, you like. Why have? And at the same time, too, I think almost in a way, like music is starting to let loose of like those like uh, what would you call them like restrictions and stuff yeah. like. It, it, and, it, and it's in a way that like we don't have like I, I was talking to someone the one day where we don't have like child pop stars anymore you know like back in like we had like especially even when I was younger like there was like Miley Cyrus and like yeah, you know Bieber. singing about like this like being late for school we right. don't have that anymore so it's like I don't know even that too in a way like it's like how much of the influence is good but at the same time if you have like certain young artists that are able to like achieve great success and actually make like good music in the process is super phenomenal to see. So I think like ageism in music itself should be dead. Uh, I think though, there's like a lot of stigma around like you can't rap after 30, which is ridiculous. Cause even for someone like myself, like I'm fairly young, even like in the, the scene that I'm in and I'm 26, like I just turned 26, you know, sure. but I'm also like four years away from 30. So it's ridiculous to think that in four years, somebody would be like, oh, no, like raise over the hill. Hang like, it up. Kinda, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, like throw in the towel. Like, you know, it's just weird. Like, Yeah, man. Yeah. I say all the time, I think there's a lane for, for all types of different artists. And like you said, like hip hop's been around for 50 years. There are people who've grown up with the genre and they're still out there. You know, they might not yeah. be the ones who are spending quite as much money as like the 18 to 25 demographic might be or whatever, or whatever it is, yeah. 14 to 25 maybe demographic, but um, they're still out there. And if you tap them on the shoulder and say like, Hey, look at this dope music, they'll normally pay attention. Um, it's just, I think yeah. a lot of them check out cause they're like, man, fuck Spotify and fuck this and that. Yeah. And, yeah. You know? Well, and the <laughs> thing is though too, man, is like, I think a, like, you need to find ways to keep up with like certain sounds and stuff. But like, yeah. I think timeless music is timeless music at the same time. Right. So if you're creating good stuff that you feel is good and like, you're actually in it for the music, I think, you know, 10 years, like it, longevity should be the, the end game for me. It's always been the end game. Like I, I've always wanted to do this for however long. And even if it's if, like, even if I'm not in rap, I'll go off and do something else and create something. Right. So definitely. Yeah. Uh, can I ask you a few more uh, opinion based questions, just kind of rapid fire. I, I like asking how important is this thing? And then just getting an artist's opinion on it. Um, yeah, man. I try my hardest not to share my own opinions on these things during this segment, but, uh, it's a challenge. So how important is a good stage show? Uh, everything I'd say for sure. Like, and that's, that's what I'm like learning to, I'm pretty independently driven. So like I do a lot of the booking, I do a lot of stuff. And even like myself, like my team is just like me and like, certain people that I know, like Devin and et cetera. So being out on the road and like watching and learning from other people, like what makes a good show in their own experience and myself too, right? Like, you know, you wouldn't want to go to a show and like the opening acts aren't good and like this and that and et cetera, right? Like you want to go to a show and have a good time. And like, I think, you know, like, so I think a stage show is, is everything for music and let alone like just a per as a person, but like the live music aspect, you know, we almost forget that that's what we're doing it for. Definitely. But at the same time too, as a, as a single act, I, a stage show is again, still everything. Cause you can, you could be a solo act and have like a full band behind you or, you know, have it really theatric and cinematic and enticing and et cetera. And I, I you know, for again, for me, I, and that might be like, again, super opinion based. Cause it's like, that's my preference. I think it is you know, totally opinion based, but that's the popular opinion from artists for sure. It's, yeah. yeah. Everybody tells me that same thing for the most part. Um, this, there's a bit of uh discrepancy when I ask people, but you kind of just mentioned it, having a backup band behind you and being alone on stage. Do you, how important is it to have a DJ or a hype man or a backup band, I guess could also go in that slot with mm -hmm. you on stage? Um, I think it's, well, I think it would depend and not to sound any way, but I also think it would depend on what you're trying to do with your yourself, right? Like how far are you trying to separate yourself from other openers or are you the headlining act or, you know, what are you trying to do, et cetera. Right. Um, so you for know, you these, personally, like on your new tour, how did you, did you approach yeah, it? The, Were you up there alone? That's what I was going to mention. Yeah. Like the last tour here, that's something that we was like a, a, a like a, a, almost like a learning curve and also just like, what do we do? It was like DJing for myself 
but also finding ways around that. So have like we what we did is we had the openers um just kind of like drag and drop their tracks. I just had my deck laid out for them and they just press play, right? And just drag and drop, drag and drop. And then um, you know, so again, yeah, I think it it definitely like having a deep but on those tours, I think the experience back to like a live show experience for the people who were new to my my music or something would have been a lot different had I had a DJ up there who, you know, knew my set and et cetera, we had rehearsed together. So it's, it's crucial. And then even he wasn't able to make it, but I had a guitarist who was supposed to make it out with me for the, the last couple tours there. And even him, like it adds such an element that is, you know, it's, it's amazing. But again, Definitely. it depends in, on what, what you're really trying to do with that. How far are you trying to take that set? And Have, have you ever been on stage as like, a dj or playing live beats for somebody like uh, as a as a producer role um i've done like here and there like i i when we did when i used to throw shows in saskatoon like that was always a thing like just saving costs so i'd just go up there with my deck and etc right so i've dj'd for people here and there um and then like that sort of gave me the confidence when people like Kripal or like junk would come through so I've i've had like experiences here and there but in terms of like I wouldn't say I'm like DJ Ray behind the decks or nothing. You right, know? Right. I, I can not scratch, something I can that, you, do stuff. that you're pushing yeah. really. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I could do it. Like I know I can do it. So, so, so you mentioned, um, uh, probably opening for Kripal. You mentioned Kripal. Uh, this is something I've been asking everybody. How important is it to open when big name rappers come through town? You know, bigger name than Kripal huge. even like just opening for people in general. How, how yeah. important yeah the Kripal thing was different too because i actually threw the show you know like me and Kripal worked together on that that show to bring him to saskatoon and stuff nice. so i played like a man of different you know many hats during that experience but i think it's definitely crucial like if you're you know at a point where you're trying to like develop growth and and build like a local fan base and etc and um if you you know like let's say like I was still in Saskatoon, like when I used to open for the bigger names, the rich homie Quan, Mercury Lee's like do the bigger shows and stuff like that. Like you, you, it opens you up to people who like a may not have heard you or just like might not have, like you might not just be on their radar. They might not even like, I've had people from like high school who have met at like bigger shows that, you know, they're like, oh, I didn't even know you rapped. And I'm like, well, I've been rapping for like five years. Yeah. So that's great. You know, like, but the exposure that you get from them is good. And again, it depends on what you're trying to do. And, you know, I think today's era too for that in that lane is like really strange because at least like I think there was a point where people used to have like maybe have the same tour manager like it, things just lined up. You know, if you were if so and so like enjoyed your music and seen like a lot of stuff, they'd bring you out, give you opportunities, which yeah. doesn't necessarily happen anymore. Like it's mainly like it's all business oriented, right? So everything's pay to play, everything's you know, etc. Sell this many tickets, reimburse you, etc. So I've also in that way like. I'm over the the big name. Like I I've I've you, I don't don't care to open for the bigger names unless it's it's like an offer or you know things like that. So yeah, yeah. I, again, it depends on what you're trying to do though. For someone who is like really trying to build a local fan base and like really trying to be out there, or maybe like even a newcomer in the game, like it's it's you know that opportunity could be could make or break it. Right. Yeah, makes sense. Um, how uh, how important is pressing vinyl? That's something that uh, I've kicked around with a few different artists before and. Um, yeah, gotten different answers on. Uh, merch is always important, kind of yeah. unanimously. Everybody says that, you know, it's important to have merch that you can sell. But specifically vinyl? I think vinyl, and I love vinyl. Like, and when I say this, it's like not in a terrible, like, I mean, no, like, nothing, you know, nothing harsh. But I think vinyl in a way, like printing vinyl is like a gimmick and not in a bad way at all. Like, but it's like, when, when in my opinion, I don't have the fan base dedicated enough and that's me being you know real like i don't have like a, they're not buying every t-shirt they're not out there so would they necessarily buy this vinyl and it's the same thing as like a tape like you know what i mean like those those yeah. things are like cool but they're also collectibles and do you have the fan base behind you that they're gonna want to collect that or you know like similar to like printing the i've been doing good album was the first album or project sorry not an album but project that i've done merch for and that was just because I did the tour first, right? So it's like, you know, it, it's it's like tough in that way, I think. Is is it going to be like, you know, how how deep goes your fan base in a way? Right. Well, and who is the fan base too? I think some guys mm -hmm. press vinyl because 
uh i don't know maybe their fan base is more old head into buying vinyl uh I, I, yeah you know i don't mean to shit on vinyl being something that's only for old heads or whatever but uh it is something that like not everybody has access to even playing or whatever so i think a lot of the yeah. time people are buying it to show support uh more yeah. so than even to like own the album exactly. or like listen to the album or whatever so yeah 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 a better word would be like instead of gimmick would be like a niche right like it's, it's you know something that you have and like again like you know if you're either like old heads or like me like personally like i grew up on like mac miller or someone like him like and i i still like value the vinyl and stuff and there's a lot of people like that you were younger right so yeah it, it's like it's tough though do you have like the tapped in things yeah definitely definitely man um how important is a local reputation that's one that I've been asking people out in Cranbrook. It might not, you know, be, yeah. it's probably pretty tough to have a, much of a local reputation, but uh, talk about Saskatoon or wherever else. Yeah. I think it's, I, you know, it's like, it's, it's tough too. I'm always like conflicted with so many like opinions and I, I'm conflicted in myself in a way. Yeah. I think a local reputation is like really big. Um, but I think staying true to yourself and who you know who you are is a lot bigger. I think it depends on what that reputation is and where it stems from. Um, you know, I think especially in hip hop, like it's rooted in a lot of at times animosity or like there's a lot of like angst towards each other, you know, a lot of like squabbles. And I've even been guilty of that in the past and having my own stuff and right. So it's like where does that reputation come from and who, who, who's saying these things or, you know, et cetera, yeah. is it self built? Is it something, you know, right. Like, um, but at the same time, like, I think having a, you know, like as long as it's nothing like serious in, in someone like committed, like a, you know, an act of, you know, whatever, I think, you know, having blinders on in any sort of musical lane is going to be huge. Cause you're going to have critics everywhere. Right. So, okay. Yeah. So kind of ignore the, some of the voices anyways know which voices. yeah yeah are. i think just yeah just know what's true in it right because i've had a lot of people too like come to me in different things about different stuff and i'm just like man like you barely i've, I've never met you like you know you know me from social media or etc right so it, it depends like but having a you know i think having a reputation with the locals is a different story like having you know when i go back to saskatoon the people that i know from there and people that, I, that have helped me i'm still good with them Right. right. So, and even, even like the, the beefs that I've had, the, you know, beefs, you know, whatever, little squabbles in the past, things like that. Like I've tried my best to squash those with those people. Cause it's like how, you know, being on good terms with people is another story, right? Yeah. It's be, it's way better to, you know, be, be helping people up the ladder than taking out runs. Hell yeah, man. Actually, this is one uh, to, to wrap up this kind of how important section here. This is one that I like asking specifically producers, how important is having the right gear for, trying to make beats uh like do you feel like you need a certain setup to do it or whatever works i think whatever works like i mean obviously too if you're like if you were like trying to go for like an old sound and it was genuinely trying to go for like the low fi quality like you might want you know actually sampling into like old you know vinyl and you know tapping that into the like high stuff and like using actual analog hardware and stuff like that right however there's nothing said that you can't sit down on your laptop and chop up a sample and it's the same thing right like you know i think again it goes back to like music just being music and like you know people used to bang sticks on you know stumps and make stuff right so i think one of the like best rhythm roulettes that i've seen I don't know if you're familiar with that yeah. thing, like the rhythm that. Yeah, 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 where they're going. Take a few vinyls. records. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then they make the beats out of them. One of the best ones I've seen, I forget his name, but he he just makes it strictly like hardware. That's it. No laptop there. There's no like mixing. There's no nothing. He's just chopping vinyls into stuff and like Dope. crazy. So it just goes to show, right? Like your tools don't make or break you. I think I've I built up our, I, like I, you know, me myself is a good example too. Like I've had guitars, I've had drums. I rarely use them you know shifting into like laptops and keyboards and like little just like launch pads and then you know also going back to wanting guitars and stuff right but that doesn't make or break me you know there's no reason why i can't figure ways how, around how about even guitars. as far as like software does the the programs you're using matter like are is there a set of programs that if you didn't have you'd be like oh, i'm i'm fucked now like uh or is pretty much any i say less do of, the same thing 
Yeah, less of the DAWs, like less of the programs themselves. Like you could use, I'd say, any like GarageBand or anything. More so the plugins, like the the right. actual effects that you're using. The because certain certain plugins, I I think are gonna have like you know certain. If you're going for reverbs, like this one might be more lush by default, etc. Or you know like especially if you're going with plugins that are trying to emulate like analog um, compressors or things like that. Like you know that might be a different thing. But again, like. I've heard people who use stock garage band plugins and they have great mixes. Right. Right. And the, you know, I think like music, I've tried, I've been trying to get out of that way of like listening to things. Cause I'll even listen to like bigger records and be like, Oh, like these drums aren't this or like, this isn't that. And it's like, dude, just, just shut up and just like, listen to Enjoy the record. It. Like, yeah. 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 So, um, okay. So let me ask you one from my tips section. I always ask, uh, artists for, a tip on something. How about um, a tip for staying inspired? You got any tips for that? Uh, you said keeping you work your pencil every day. sharp. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd say keeping your pencil sharp for sure, but also knowing when to take a step back. Like not trying. Like if if I'm making like five beats a day and I'm not writing to any of them, I don't force it. Right. It's like I know when I, I when I'm like, OK, like it's just a making beats day or like it's just this day or like, you know, maybe the beats not there and I want to go right. So I pick up a YouTube beat for now and just like knowing when when's enough and when to like step in and, you know, but keeping your pencil sharp and still definitely trying to like do something that pertains to your craft every day. Yeah. Good yeah. advice, man. I like it. Um so I ask everybody as well. These are the before you go questions. We're, we'll get, get it wrapped up here. I hope. uh yeah, it's all right to go a few minutes over the hour or whatever, but um, you're good, man. Can, I love talking. I love interviews. So, so man, I appreciate it. Um, can you describe your local scene, uh, local hip hop scene specifically? And since you're kind of in the boonies, I mean, if you want to talk about whatever Vancouver or Saskatoon or whatever scene uh, mm -hmm. you kind of call home or whatever you feel closest to, uh, to yeah. describe it. Uh, at this point, man, like I think I'm a little bit of a misfit like i've always been that way right so um i've, I've been you know kind of like i wouldn't say like i'm definitely like i'm out there all the time but i've tapped into enough to the vancouver scene here and there like i'm all over the place at this point i so i i tried to like i mean obviously like having a community is really good and like having a local community is huge for like art and music and etc but i think having scenes in a way is like something that's almost like constricting for us as as musicians and 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 artists etc because i even come from like punk and metal too right so i left that specifically in the Saskatoon local scene because it was just getting like super aggressive and like dudes were just they, like going to shows to just like beat the shit out of each other. And that was it. Like, you know what I mean? And it was like literally like not even to like let loose aggression, just genuinely to just like beat the shit out of people, you know? So it's like the scenes I think is like, a, a, it's a pool for like developing toxicity. So there's yeah. a difference between having a community and having a scene, I think. But my scene itself, um, because of where I'm at in, in, you know, being, you know, just kind of like forced to be by myself in a way. It's like misfit vibes. Like I travel and I'm a wanderer at this point and that's what I enjoy. I, just, I enjoy actually tapping into like everyone else's scenes and seeing like the difference, like, and how they all work, like in Vancouver. Hey, me too. Like Cal <laughs> yeah, yeah, man, yeah, I know, right? literally like, so. yeah, like seeing it, how they all are and it's cool. And like, I, it's in a way it's been that opportunity for me not having a scene to just be like okay cool like and even like going back to saskatoon after leaving that and coming back to it and then noticing the things noticing the whether it's like good or bad parts of it you're like oh okay like you know you kind of wake up to certain things yeah that's my opinion on it yeah man even talking mm -hmm. to different artists i've been um kind of just soaking up some of that game and just learning different stuff about different scenes and you know the different sounds and players on them or whatever it's uh it's been fun man i i'm very much with you on enjoying learning about different scenes uh can you name some artists who you think people should be up on who maybe they aren't up on myself included? Yeah. Um, who are we thinking of? Obviously me. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Uh, and listen guys. to Ray the Nihilist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my, my household guys, district Apollo and just read. I think we're all, you know, if I'm not like tooting my own horns here, I think we're all like critically underrated in what we're doing. We're, 
you know, super young, but we're all like real Sorry, hungry. Can you list the roster again? District Apollo. Just Reed. Just Jeez, Reed. Who Junk, hungry. Okay. Uh, and then there's, the, you know, countless, like I said, like it's like there's countless producers. I think it's less of like a label, more of just like a big umbrella that, that Junk has, right? Yeah, no. yeah, 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 exactly. But you no know, specific, the, 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 the little gang there. That as long as people up. aren't giving them like 15 bucks for a patch to sign up, I'm with it. Nah, yeah, yeah the, no. the $50 deal. Yeah. Um, <laughs> outside, outside of that, for sure, I think, like I said, like I've been into a lot of indigenous stuff and I think that's bubbling. So it'd be good to see a lot of people, you know, you mentioned Dreesis, like Dreesis, Dakota Bear. Um, it's amazing to see what, what those two are doing, but specifically Dakota too. Like, you know, I, I, not that we were super close or nothing, but you know, we had our, we crossed paths for sure. And we did work together. So yeah. what he's been able to do in those, those couple of years and build is amazing to see, um, you know, any, any artist in the indigenous scene, um, you know, there's dudes even like out of Lethbridge, like, you know, Donnie Sage, great dude like you know in the indigenous I'm talking scene, to donnie like, sage and uh el Camino linguist next week actually for flying for great dudes man. Yeah. great dudes right like, so you know there's there's so much stuff i think just be open to as much as possible yeah. for sure yeah um any plans for tours or shows coming up that we should tell people about uh no or, or not projects a, I mean, for somewhat, that matter <laughs> yeah projects yeah for sure i'm working on a project right now um as like i said it's my most like personable project um it's been the one that's the like i've been notorious for being like oh this album i'm drop, I'm working on this and then i don't drop anything uh, like you know throw it in the vault and it's gone so this is the one where i'm like dead set that it has to come out just because i feel like i've done enough personal growth professional growth like I, you know all this stuff and then also i'm feeling like i'm not at a point where i need to be right so working on a project and i think like that's kind of the goal after the two tours was to just take a step back and create music that's just genuine. And like I said, just let these things come and flow as they come. Um, and then obviously with developing that and just trying to keep the momentum going, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I, I say that I'm always like, after the two tours, I was like, oh, I need a break. Got back here and I'm like, okay, I could plan something for next year. Or like, I could plan a small run in January. So like, you know, the, the it's always there. It's always like, I the stage for me is where I, I, I live. I enjoy that and I love it. So you know I'm trying I, to get back at the there as too. soon as possible <laughs> yeah i'm itching but at the same time too i need my break right and i need to make music so that, like i'm like even told my wife is like i can't go back out with like the same set you know not even the same songs there has to be something new in there yeah so totally you know uh so modern music era what's the best way for fans of your music or other <clears> people's <throat> music to support artists that they enjoy uh, to support, definitely not streaming on anything. <laughs> uh, no, stream, do the streams, obviously listen and stuff like that. But I think um, the best way to support is like actually purse either. Like if you don't have the funding to like buy the merchandise and personally tap in with them, just like DMs, you know, social media, like actually showing that support. Yeah. I'm not going to say that like the friends thing, like you do your friends need to be your supporters. Cause I disagree with that at the same time. Like you should be yeah, striving you shouldn't look for to outwards. your friends to be your biggest supporters. I don't think. Yeah. And yeah. I'm guilty of it too. Right. Like, you know, I'm guilty of having that mindset, but you know, like you should strive for outwards, but at the same time too, like having people share your stuff or like anything, like just if you support someone tapping in and like letting them know of their music, that it's either like good or maybe inspiring or whatever. Yeah. Makes a world of a difference in that yeah. artist mindset. So those messages genuine are huge support. for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And as well, like I always say, you know, like you mentioned shares, but even likes, you know, uh, the algorithm is a son of a bitch. And like, yeah. if people don't click like, cause they're too cool to click like and be the first guy clicking like on that post, then like, no one else sees that post you know, a lot of the time, you know? Exactly, so, man. No, um, yeah. Help, help out your your artists that you enjoy on social media. Just um, click that heart button or whatever else. Click the share, send it to people. Even word of mouth is huge, right? But yeah, I ask exactly. everybody that just because I like always reiterating these things kind of as a wrap up to this show of how people yeah. should be supporting, right? Um, where can people find you on social media most often? uh everywhere i mean i'm not as like active on uh twitter and stuff like that like all the small stuff but like facebook instagram i'm fairly active on so if you tap in on there everywhere at ray the nihilist right on all right man <clears throat> um anything else you wanted to get off your chest uh that's about about it for my questions nah better i um, think i'm pretty good just you know everybody keep keep doing good shit man be good people it's been my thing lately just like 
be a good person. Spread as much love as possible. Hell yeah. It's free to be a good person. It's not hard. Just, you know, do good shit, man. Everyone strive for better every day. That's it. Perfect sign off. We'll end it with that, man. Thank you very much. I appreciate you coming on here and uh, I'm going to keep playing your music. Hey, thank you, brother. Hell yeah. Peace. peace. All right, everybody. So that was the Fly in Formation with Ray the Nihilist. It's out in Cranbrook, BC, originally from Saskatoon, I believe. Um, but uh, yeah, you should definitely check out his music on all the streaming platforms. I bet he's got Bandcamp set up. Um, if he comes to town, you should uh, definitely go through and check out the show. I uh, heard good things when uh, both, you know, the Lions Eat Goats tour came through, and then I believe he was also in Lethbridge with uh, with his uh, own tour there that he was mentioning, the, um, the one for his recent album, which is slipping my mind. I feel good, I think, something along those lines. Uh, apologies to Ray the Nihilist for forgetting the name of that album off the top of my head. But uh, yeah, shouts to uh, MC Good Medicine 2 for coming through in chat. I appreciate you being here and um hanging out this uh audio will go on to the end of an after the smoke is clear coming up um the video will go over to youtube with the other 40 some interviews that i've done and uh yeah if you enjoy learning about new artists make sure you tap into those over on my youtube youtube slash dubious um, as well, dubious.com is the hub for everything that I do. You can find all the interviews, all the After the Smoke is Clear over there, or you can go directly to mixcloud.com slash dubious to listen to new weekly mixes every week where I put together uh, my favorite independent hip-hop from across the country and, um, yeah, put together an hour-long mix and put it out for the people. So, like Ray said, show love, spread love. <laughs>